All right, so now we have uh, the inputs into our geometry. And to make optimization work, we also need some feedback. So we need to somehow measure performance. And if we think about these panels, uh, these scale panels as actually openings. So when we scale it, we create openings of different sizes. So this will be like the biggest opening on the panel. This will be the smallest, like a window. We can think about uh, optimizing the location of these openings to actually increase openness while decreasing the solar gain inside of our building. And to measure that solar gain, we're actually going to go back to heliotrope and use its sun angles to measure the amount of light that would come through each opening and hit the inside of our building. So in heliotrope, I'm just going to set these back to just give me one vector. So I'm going to set the month manually again to 9 and the offset manually to 0.5. And I will visualize again my solar arc. So just turn preview back on. And I will visualize my solar angle. Make that a little bit bigger. OK. So whereas before we were calculating the angle of each panel to the sun, what we're going to do now is actually project each opening onto a plane within our building to measure how much sun is coming through and hitting the floor of our building. And this way we're going to get some idea about the solar exposure within our building. And then we're going to use optimization to try to arrange these panel openings to minimize the amount of sun coming in. Okay, so we're going to do that through projection. Basically, we're going to take the outline of each opening and project it onto the floor. So first, we're going to need a floor plane to use as, uh, as a base for our projection. So I'm going to do that in uh, Rhino, actually create that geometry. First, I will enter show to unhide all my geometry. I can hide this outer form. And here I have the base plane of my model. What I want to do is actually trim this base to my outer form in order to create the floor of my building. So I'm going to go to trim. This is all in Rhino right now. Trim. I want to select my outer form as my cutting object and then select the ground. What I've done here is basically trim that ground to just be the floor of my building. And then I'll hide the outer form again. Okay, so there I have the floor of my building. And what I'm going to do is project the outline of every opening along that sun vector onto the floor of my building. So to do the projection, I'm going to reference the floor into Grasshopper. I will make a geometry node in Grasshopper. And then right click, set one geometry, and click the floor in my model. Okay, so now I can hide that. And you can see that the floor is referenced now in Grasshopper. And to do the projections, I'm going to use uh, the project node. And you can see there's two projects, one which will project an object onto a plane, and one which will project a, a curve onto a V-Rep. And we want this because we want to actually specify what it's projecting onto. If we use the plane and we feed it like the XY plane, it's going to just do the projections anywhere in space. But we want to constrain the projections to only project onto our the surface of our floor. Okay, because we only want to track what's going on inside of our building. So I'll click on this project a curve onto a VREP node. And here, uh, as inputs, it's uh, asking for the curves to project, the VREP to project onto. So this will be our floor surface and the direction of projection, which will be our solar vector. So for the curves, we want to um, take the basically the boundaries of all these panels. So right now we have um, surfaces, and we want to get the boundaries. So to do that in under surfaces, there's a, an analysis tab. And we can go to deconstruct VREP. Deconstruct VREP will take any surface and split it into its faces, edges, and vertices. What we want is the edges because we want the boundaries. 
And you can see how, again, Grasshopper has used its data structures um, to make this a little bit easier for us. It's basically taken every one of the 350 panels and created a branch for each one and then put the edges of that panel into those branches. So you see that most of them have four um, objects in each branch, which represents the four edges. So now we can use the join curves node. And if we feed the edges into that curve, it's going to just take the curves that are in each branch and combine them to each other and give us the perimeter curve of each panel. Now if we hide our scaled panels and our uh, deconstructed VREPs, you can see that we have just the outside edges. And because we used the join, those are actually polyline, closed polylines for each panel. OK, so once we have those uh, edges, we can feed those into the curve input of the project. And again, because we don't need each uh, panel now in its own uh, branch, we can just flatten that tree. So we, now we just have a straight list of 350 closed curve outlines. For our BREP to project onto, we're going to use our referenced floor plate. Plug that into the B. See that now it's projected all of those curves onto our floor, and it does this in the default Z direction. So all we have to do now is plug in our uh, vector, our sun vector coming from heliotrope into the last input here, which is the direction. Now those projections are actually being taken along that solar vector. And the projections will actually move as we move the sun. Okay, so this gives us some idea of the amount of sun that will be coming in through the openings in our facade. Um, so once we have those projections, uh, to get a number, um, basically a number representation of how much sun's coming in, we can just take the areas of all those projections, right? Because the areas will basically tell us the sun patch or the area of sun that's entering our building. So to do that, we again use the area node and we just feed in our, our curves into the area. And because the not all the curves are projecting onto the plane, and some of them are projecting and not forming closed curves, it's going to give you um, this error. Basically, it's telling, it, telling us that some of the curves aren't suitable for the area cal calculation. But it will calculate the area of those that are suitable. And you can basically visualize this by seeing that every curve that puts a centroid it's calculating the area. So we can kind of, at some time, in some specific cases, ignore this warning um, and just know that um, it's calculating the area for the ones that we want. Cool. So once we have these areas, we basically want to just sum up all the areas. In order to do the summation, we need to flatten all these numbers. Again, some of the uh, curves weren't suitable for area calculation, so it'll give you a null, which basically means there's no data there. If we have the panel, we can see that there's still some numbers in here, and the nulls basically are invalid panels. But we don't care about that, because when we do the massive addition, it'll just sum everything together and give us one final result. This will be the total area of all the valid projections on our floor. OK, so again, it's not super precise. Like, it's not capturing these geometries. But we don't want anything too precise. We just want to calibrate our, um, our openings to keep out the sun. OK, so that's good for one day. And at this point, we can do the same thing we did before. Or instead of doing one time in one day, we can do a range of times throughout the day just by plugging in a range again. And now, basically, it took every one of those days And it calculate the projection of every one of the panels on uh, every time. So now we have 861 projections. We take the area of all of them. A lot of them are not valid. But in the end, we flatten everything. And we take the sum of everything. And it gives us one number of all the sun basically coming in throughout these 10 points in the day.
guess I'll just hide some of this stuff so we can see what's going on. So to visualize this better, I can create a surface from each boundary of the projection. This will just help me get a visual feedback about um, where the sun is coming into my model. So you can see that something like for one time in one day, like maybe I could guess what would happen, but over the course of the whole day or maybe over the course of the whole year, it's kind of hard to predict where all the sun angles are going to be and how they're going to affect the sun coming into my building. So now I have some kind of feedback based on that. I have the visual feedback, but I also have this numerical feedback. So now I can, um, I'll just make a panel to visualize this. I'll feed in the result. I can name this something like a total sun area. So now I have my uh, analysis model and I have this setup where the facade openings are being driven by a set of inputs. So this can change based on these inputs. And I have Grasshopper doing all the processing, give me, giving me one output, which is the total sun area coming in through the facade at this time, at this day of the year in 10 different times during that day. Okay, so I have a range of numerical inputs generating one numerical output. And in order to kind of optimize my building or increase efficiency, I basically want to minimize the amount of sun coming in. So this kind of idea of minimizing some kind of output by driving a certain number of inputs is the basic setup for an optimization. So once we have this setup, we can use Galapagos plugin for uh, Grasshopper to do the optimization. What Galapagos will do basically is keep changing these sliders, measuring the output coming in through here, and trying to get those sliders in a certain configuration, which will create the minimum value here. All right, so that's our setup. Uh, and the last thing we're going to do is actually go through the optimization process in Galapagos.